Today, we're going to talk about why dumpers act so cold after a breakup. Specifically, I'd like to focus on why they tend to demonize you and make you out to be the bad guy when they themselves were the one to break up with you. And all I think probably the best place to start is by looking at the following topics. Number one, we're going to have a discussion on what constitute cold behaviors. What is that? Like definitively across the board, what is cold behavior? Next, I'd like to look at how avoidant attachment styles tend to factor into this, why and any anxious behavior from you can actually set them off even more, and taking a good look at anger as it relates to their own self-validation. So let's begin. Let's start by defining cold behavior. So for reference, anytime I'm talking about a dumper's cold behavior after a breakup, I'm usually talking about the following things. Number one, them suddenly ghosting you. Number two, them giving you mixed signals in a negative way. And number three, them getting angry with you when there's no real reason for them to get angry. So for many of our clients, it's a real difficult puzzle to solve. Turns out both of those types of behaviors can be explained with the avoidant attachment style. So the avoidant attachment style in relationships is someone who values their own independence so much that anytime anyone comes in and threatens that independence, they lash out either by arguing with them or more commonly leaving the relationship. So is this starting to sound familiar? Now where this factors in for us actually revolves around the anxious and avoidant relationship trap. So what is that? Well, above I established that most of the client's exes that we've studied have avoidant attachment styles. On the other hand, most of our clients have anxious attachment styles. So this is relevant because often what can create cold behavior from an ex is often being triggered by an anxious person's anxious tendencies. The avoidant core wound revolves around independence. The anxious core wound revolves around being left alone. So when the avoidant pushes away because they want their independence back, the anxious person gets triggered because they feel like the avoidant person is going to leave them forever. The result is this vicious cycle. The anxious person gets close. The avoidant person gets triggered and runs away. The anxious person starts to fight. The avoidant avoids the solution. Then there's a short-term reconciliation. Then the cycle starts again and again and again. Now, what's interesting about this is it kind of explains both the avoidant being cold and ghosting, the running away phase, and the mixed signal phase, the short-term reconciliation phase. This can occur on a macro level or even a micro level. So what is the macro level? That's how you often get these on again, off again relationships. But the micro level is far more interesting. It's actually the story of a singular fight and how it gets resolved within a relationship. Obviously, the anxious person gets close. The avoidant person runs away. This starts a fight. The avoidant person inevitably avoids the solution and then nothing gets really solved. But the anxious person wanting to seem like things are okay just sweeps it under the rug. It's still there, but they continue to move on with the relationship. So there's a short-term reconciliation, and then the cycle just starts over and over again. So I always kind of view this cycle as similar to the Russian Fibonacci doll. The truth is, all of it is symptomatic of a greater problem in the fact that both attachment styles are insecure, and really what both of them need to do is start surrounding themselves with more secure ones so they can learn how to become more secure themselves. Of course, one thing that we haven't really explained yet is how the anger component of cold behavior comes into play. Anger equals a way to validate themselves. So a few years ago, Coach Anna and I did a video for the YouTube channel. She brought up a really interesting point revolving around anger and how it can almost have positive characteristics. Sounds weird, right? So let me quote her exactly. Here's what she said. When I say that anger has positive characteristics, I mean that when someone says you're stupid, they're actually implying I'm smart. You're selfish. Well, you're selfish means I'm generous. You're behaving like a child means I'm behaving like an adult. This is why people get angry very easily and they stay angry because it feels good and it's personally validating. I think this is especially interesting to study after a breakup because we know that no matter your ex's attachment style, it's going to have a profound negative impact. So demonizing you, making you the bad guy is better than making themselves the bad guy. To quote Anna again, anger often protects the angry person because if the person's angry, they're protecting themselves from feeling sadness or shame. So anger in a way is a defense mechanism. So here's my argument. 
When you're looking at why the dumper is acting cold towards you, one possible explanation is that it might be a defense mechanism to stave off feeling sadness or shame. Remember, human beings are very pain adverse, and that's doubly true for emotional pain and pain during a breakup. So rather than looking back at the failed relationships, they would rather paint you as the cause of its demise, even if it's not true. So every day in our private Facebook support group, we get questions revolving around X's anger like this one. Well, the one I'm about to put up on the screen here. Admittedly, I got it quite a few years ago and I wanted to put it up because I wanted to make sure everyone's identity was protected. But bear with me here because I think it really wraps up and solves a lot of the issues that we're gonna be talking about today. So this person made a post in 2017 talking about their ex. I can't stop thinking about my ex today for some reason. It's been over four months and he hasn't apologized or made any initiative. The texts I did send him were initially positive, a little bit neutral, but since the conversation only focused on apartment stuff, he remained angry and said he wanted to be left alone at the beginning of June. He's acted like he hates me, but I've done nothing to deserve any of this. I was a great girlfriend that simply missed her family. So here we have the classic cold behavior signs. Number one, he's ignored her, ghosting. Number two, he's been somewhat positive in their few texts together and then negative again, mixed signals. And then he's acted recently like he hates her, anger. Now, I'm particularly familiar with this person's situation because they ended up becoming a moderator in the private Facebook support group. And after hearing this person's perspective on the breakup, she did absolutely nothing wrong. And yet she was painted as the bad guy by her ex-boyfriend. Why? Well, most likely, it's a whole lot easier for that specific ex-boyfriend to deflect blame onto her so he doesn't have to take responsibility for his shortcomings. Here's the point I'm trying to arrive at. Most anger you see dumpers exhibit immediately post breakup is a fence mechanism. Add in the fact that we teach our clients to let the breakup make them as opposed to break them. There's a nuanced layer where the dumper actually grows more angry because the dumpy isn't reacting the way they should. The prevailing belief that most dumpers have is that because they dumped you, they should be placed on this pedestal and worshiped as the one that got away. And when the narrative doesn't come true, they often freak out, get even angrier, and who better to blame than you, the source of their pain.